Okay, everyone. Come on, just, you too, Ron. Just in case you thought I drink alone and I'm an addict, <laughs> which, which might be the case. But today I got I, I, misery loves company. Lachaim, lachaim, lachaim. Amen. 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 All right. Right. Now sit down. Okay. This is nice. I like this. Okay, I thought it was beer, but this whiskey, you you know, you should change the name of that. You know what happened? Well, Tanya start, and whiskey. It started, and out, people it started out in beer, uh -huh. and then everyone's like, you want beer? No, I'll take a shot of whiskey. So it just okay. kind of like transitioned. So it evolved. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what happens when I'm around? Uh, so we're holding. <laughs> it was more alliterative. It was more alliterative. <laughs> with uh, Ooh, that's Tanya, tequila and Tanya. Yeah, there you go. Tequila and Tanya too. So we're holding the middle of chapter 19. And last time we learned that every single Jew, every single Yid, no matter, no matter what, Bye -bye. Take, care, guys. Take, care. Take care, thank you for coming to me. Every single Yid, no matter who he is, is it even the Kal Sheba Kalim, even the, the lowest observant in a Jew who's anti-Jew, um, a, a Jew who goes against everything that we hold dear, to Judaism, Israel, or, or, or Halacha, and everything else, even he, even he has a, a hidden love for, the, for, the, um, for, for God. And he, can, and he can access it. I, how come he doesn't uh, on a normal basis? Because he acts like an idiot. See? You know, so some, sometimes it's called, in the Gemara, it's called the spirit of foolishness, spirit of stupidity. Why? Because he thinks to himself, oh, God doesn't see, God doesn't care, God's not looking, or God understands, or, or I'm, still, I'm still a good Jew. Fill in the blank, whatever stupidity, you know, whatever stupidity uh, you know, a, person, a, a person might say. So, so now, I thought I was going to ask a question. If a guy's such a bad Jew, the guy never does any tire mitzvahs, why is it that when, when it comes to conversion, when it's the ultimate, uh, he's ready to give up his life. Two seconds ago, he was eating, you know, ham and cheese, right? Or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the famous story with Moshe Dayan, which I think is the true story. <laughs> Tonight, we've been in the previous class, we, we, we were saying stories that not necessarily are true, but we think they're true, could be true. So the story goes to Moshe Dayan that when they, when they, when they um, redeemed, when they freed the Western Wall in the 67 war, Moshe Dayan was there, the famous, the famous picture of the three generals walking through the gate. Uh -huh. you, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. So they said, huh? Yeah, no, I'm saying, but the, the famous picture of Rabin, Dayan, and I forgot who else is walking through the, the which gate? Uh, which gate? I think I think I think, uh, I think it was Hashar Tzion. I think so. And uh, he comes to the wall. He's crying out of his out of his one eye, right? And um, and and someone saw him and he said, "Damn, what do you care about the Kotel? You're not. Everybody knows you're the most irreligious and secular Jew in Israel." So the story goes that he told the reporter or whatever it is that asked the question. Said yesterday. I was the most irreligious Jew in Israel. Tomorrow, I, I'll be the most irreligious Jew in Israel. Well, today, I'm the most religious Jew in Israel. Now, whether the story is true or not, it doesn't make a difference because the message of the story is very powerful. Here you have a guy who's not religious, doesn't care about Torah and everything else, but something, something woke him up. The question is, why is it that when it comes to conversion, all of a sudden the Jew decides, no, I'm Jewish. Five minutes ago, you weren't Jewish. You didn't care about being Jewish. All of a sudden, now, you, you, um, you, care, about, you care about being Jewish. We saw after October 7th, you have Jews who didn't care about Judaism. They came out of the woodwork. They support Israel, you know, and, and they, 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 uh, they love for the Jewish people. So, so, so the Alter Rebbe is, is, uh, is going to talk about it. And he's going to say it like this. The fact of the matter is, every Jew wants to be connected to Judaism. That's the, the natural state, we, talk, we spoke about this in chapter 8, the natural state of a Jew is Judaism. I, how come we don't act that way all the time? It's because when we do something, when we take a bite of that piece of food, or we drink, or we act in a certain way that's, a, that's contrary to the Torah, 
we don't see it as a act that severs our relationship with God in Judaism. We see it as, eh, you know, a, a, God, a God understands. Or a God said, it, it, it's okay. I once, I think, asked a guy to put on tefillin. A few times. The guy would say, oh, no, God, I, it's okay. God, God, God's okay with it if I don't put on tefillin. And I, I kept thinking in my head, I didn't, I didn't want to be obnoxious. I didn't want to run in the wrong way. But I'm thinking, are you sure? Because I'm pretty sure he's not okay. Because he wrote it in the Torah. I'm pretty sure he wants you to put on film. Right? You keep saying God's okay with it. So, so but, but there are some actions that they're so upfront in your face, you can't, you can't beat around it. So you can say, I'll eat the ham, but I'll still be a good Jew. You know, I'll do this, I'll still be a good Jew. I won't eat, I'll, I'll eat on Yom Kippur, I'll still be a good Jew. But how can you reason away, I'll convert, and I'll still be a good Jew? You can't. There's certain things you can't, you can't mentally do the gymnastics to get around it. It's it's too it's too um, it's too blatant. It's too big a leap. Too big a leap. So that that's why a Jew might act a certain way and not he won't have a problem with his Judaism, but when it comes to doing something against his against his uh, against uh, against his Judaism. And by the way, for some people Judaism is Israel. Some people it's Shabbos, right? That's why you have this, this whole argument, by the way. Some people feel that Judaism is living in Israel or speaking Hebrew. I, we had parents who didn't want to send their kid to Hebrew school. Why? My, my kid speaks Hebrew. What do we need Hebrew school for? Yeah, but he doesn't know about Shabbos, Kosher, or Shoshani, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, nothing. But he speaks Hebrew. For them, that was Judaism. Do your kids speak Hebrew? No. <laughs> I'm more of a Jew than you. Really, I, had, I, I really had this conversation. And I once had an Israeli say, you're going to come tell me about Judaism? So you live in New York. I live in, I live in Israel. When I was a, a yeshiva boy in, in, in Israel, you know, so the Chabad, they send the yeshiva boys around to and put on film and all that. She told me, well, you, you're going to come and educate me about Judaism? I'm automatically a step better than you. I live in Israel. You, you're a guy. You live, you, you live in Brooklyn, right? I mean, he say the word guy, but, you know, but, and, um, and so, so, it, so this is what it is. So the truth of the matter is, the good news is we all got it. Right? The, you know, the bad news, it, it's almost like there's water or oil everywhere. The question is how do you, uh, or, or like the rabbi said, when, when the roof of the shul needed a repair. So the good news is, he says, we already fundraised all the money for the new roof. The bad news is it's in your pocket. <laughs> right, right? So the question is, how do we get, how do we get it out? So let's go. Elam, Shagolus Hazeh, the divinity, the godliness inside of you is in a state of exile. And, and repeating again, exile doesn't just mean you're in a different place. So I'm, I'm born in New York, but I live in Florida. I, would you consider me in exile? Maybe now it's so hot outside. Right? <laughs> what am I doing in this crazy place? Right? Um, go to Alaska. Go to Alaska, right? Yeah, go to Anchorage. So say, so say, I always say, right? In 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 September you're an idiot, in January you're a genius. In in Florida, right? And you're looking around, and everybody's in January they're all freezing. Like, what are they doing, right? Um, what does exile mean? Exile doesn't mean you're in a foreign place. That's not exile. Exile means you lack the ability to express your true self. That's exile. So you could be in Israel and be in exile. Which answers a side question. Do the Jewish people in Israel pray for the coming of Mashiach? Yeah. The answer is yeah. I, they're in Israel already. We pray that we should go back to Israel, but they're in Israel. Do they, there's a blessing in the Amidah that God should gather us and bring us back to Israel. We're in Israel. Do you say the blessing? The answer is yeah. yeah. Why? Because uh, we, we, look what's going on now. The Jewish people in Israel are sitting on edge. Iran's going to attack and everything else. You call that living? No. The, 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 famous, uh, um, the famous story, the, the Russian guy comes to the door. Right? What, what do you do for, you know, what do you do for a living? The, the, guy, the Russian guy answers the KGB. You call this a living? <laughs> right? So the, um, so the, uh, so in Israel, you could live in Israel. You could live in Jerusalem. You could live in the old city, but you're still in exile. Why? Why? Because what's the definition of a Jew? A Jew means to live free in Israel 
and feel comfortable to live as a Jew. That means to do the Torah in its completion and not, not, not to worry. I was, I was telling my kids once that I remember my bar mitzvah. My, my parents made me a, an offer. I couldn't refuse. I tell you my father was from Brooklyn. Oh, yeah. He's from Montreal. Evito uh, right? Um, so my father, my parents made me an offer. They did this with the last four kids. We're eight. The last four kids, they, the offer was, we can make you a big party in Brooklyn with all your friends, or you can go to Israel. So obviously I went to Israel. You know? so, um, so the Friday night at Mar Mitzvah, we wanted, to, we wanted to do Mariv, Arvit, by the Kotel. And we couldn't. Why? Because our, our, our kind cousins, this, I don't remember, it was 1994, I don't remember what, why, why exactly they were angry. But something happened, and they were throwing rocks. Because where we, where we stand, by the Kotel, remember, you're on the mountain. I mean, they leveled it all out, so you don't realize it. But behind the Kotel, they're higher. You're thinking they're standing by a massive wall. How are they throwing rocks over it? But they're higher because it's, it's an incline. Mm -hmm. So they were throwing rocks over the kotel. No one could go. No one can go down. So Thomas, I, I was in Jerusalem Friday night by the kotel, the holiest place. That that that's called living. That that's called being. Even though you're there, you're in exile. So the, so the the spark of Judaism is is in you, but it's in a state of exile, it's the lack of ability to express itself. <coughs> so that this, the beginning is Chachma, it's in a, it's at the level of Chachma. Chachma is that first level in conception. What's conception? Let's get, right, get political. You know, where does, where, where does uh, life start? Right? Um, what's conception? The problem is... When he becomes a doctor. Yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> and he is a doctor. Exactly. He's got his license. Exactly. Right. You can kick, and a job. And you, you can kick him. You can kick him out of the house until he, you know, right? Unless he comes back. Is it the chicken or the egg? No, so, so when they say life begins at conception or not, what's the argument against it? Because to pinpoint conception is so difficult. What is it? It's a. It, it, it's a momentary thing. So chachma, it's called conception because it's when the idea is born in your head. It's a momentary. It's a momentary thing. So So that's so that the problem is the soul. The soul is in a, so to speak, in a abstract state. It's not. He's not conscious of it. He has it. So let's say, for example, you had a talent to draw, right? Let's say you had a talent to play hockey. Right. Right. You live here in. Uh, in but you live in Texas. Or the, the Texas has a hockey team. I, I, you live in Mexico, right? You're born in Guatemala, right? Yeah. You know, let's say Guatemala, right? You live in a, Car a, a Caribbean place. You never even know what hockey is. It could be you'd be better than Wayne Gretzky. But but that um, blasphemy. Gordy Howe. Uh, <laughs> um, Mark Messier. Yeah, Mark Messier. Eh? So, but but you never know why because that that ability. That, that ability is in a state of is in a state of exile. It's there, but but, but it lacks the ability to, to to present itself. Aval, however, next in the old yeah. print two sixty six. Aval, however, yet now, uh, now we're in two seventy three in the new print. Sheish v'ikar shal bechinas chachma shemenefesh. The root and core of chachma of the conception of the soul of the godly soul who b'meichin is in the intellect. Ve'eni b'slabish b'levush sak the klipas shavachal smoli, chal smoli, and your godly self never becomes invested in the in the in the impu, in, in the impure part of it. I mean, it could be covered, never contaminated. It could be exiled. It could be you know. So, um, thinking of, uh, thinking of the story of uh, of the uh, I think the, uh, again I think this uh, this story I'm pretty sure is true. Third time of the charm. <laughs> no asterisk. What? No asterisk. I, I'm pretty sure. But again. So this, is, this isn't the presidential debate. No one's fact-checking me. I can say whatever I want. One plus one is three. What are you going to do about it? Right? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do about it? <laughs> right. Anyway, so, the story, so when, the, when the Nazis would come into a town, they would, they would, um, they would you know, dehumanize and, and degrade the rabbis and the leaders of the, of the town. So it was one, so they came into one town, and they made the rabbi you know, clean the streets with a brush and... And, they, and, 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 they, and everybody had to come watch the leaders of the town you know, being, you know, being debased like that. 
And they asked the rabbi, I forgot what rabbi says. He says, who's the superior race? The rabbi said, we are. And they got the German so upset. He started <laughs> kicking him and beating him. He said, now who's the superior race? He said, still us. And he's kicking him in his blood. And he says, who's the superior race? He says, still us. So how can you say that? He says, because as long as you're, you're doing the kicking, and I'm, I'm laying here on the ground, we're superior. That means, yeah, you could put us in the concentration camps and whatever it is, but you can never contaminate the holiness of a Jew. That's what it means, holy, that means goals. So the God, your godly soul, it could be covered. And, 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 it's, and it's covered by a tremendous amount of, of dirt and schmutz and garbage and everything else. And it never has the ability to express itself. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean you're, uh, I, think I, told, I don't know if I told the story of this, this guy. He was an Israeli guy. He's big kibbutznik, not religious. He was anti-religion. And it was this town. I'm, I'm forgetting a lot of details of the story. I'm just remembering this one detail. This town that, that the guy they called the rabbi. Why was he the rabbi? It was some, I think, um, coastal or island place. I forgot. I have to look up the story. But anyway, this guy was called the rabbi because he was the only guy who knew how to read. Mm-hmm. And he was a rabbi. Then he left. Why? Because he wanted more Judaism. So there's one, there one Israeli who ran away from Judaism and ran away from Israel, ran away from everything Judaism, and he came to this place, and they come over to him and said, we want you to be the rabbi. I said, rabbi, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know a damn thing about Judaism. Yeah, but you know how to read Hebrews. So automatically, you're the rabbi. <laughs> so, <laughs> so automatic by default. Yeah, by default. And he said, what, are you going to leave us by yourself? But the guy, he, you know, he would come to the shul, he would, on Shabbos, he would read Passover. He had no idea. The guy had no idea. You know, to us, Americans, you think if a guy's Israeli, he automatically knows because you're in Israel. It, it, just by osmosis. But you, sometimes you could meet Israelis that don't know a thing about Judaism. And you, it's, it's, it's shocking. How, how could it be? But it, unfortunately, that's the, uh, um, that's the case. So you could have a Jew that his Judaism is totally covered, but never contaminated. It, it, it's there. It's in, a, it, it's in a dormant state. But I'll show you in the wicked people. And by the way, again, Russia over here doesn't mean wicked as far as he's a bad person. He's a rapist, murderer, you know. Bernie Madoff. No, no. Russia over here means he violates God's will. Right? It says, and it doesn't have an impact on them. As long as they're, they are preoccupied with, with whatever the faculties, um, whatever the pleasures of the world. So you, have, so you have yourself and you have the way that you express yourself. So a person can express himself in doing unhealthy activities. But, but his true self, his, his, his holy self, can never be contaminated. Ah, however, so here the guy can eat McDonald's, Wendy's every day of his life. But when it comes to the test of faith, the faith is, no, faith is the connection that a Jew has to God is higher than intellect. Because we, we said, the, the Jewish soul can never be impacted. No, you cannot, you cannot out-reason your Judaism. You go to a Jew who never put on tefillin before, right? This morning he ate the, the egg, the egg ham McMuffin, right? And for lunch he's having, you know, steak and cheese, whatever it is. And a Philly he, cheese steak. Huh? A Philly cheese steak. Okay, I, I'm guessing that means with cheese. Yeah. All right. Um, that, that's why I never been to Philadelphia. How's <laughs> <laughs> the trip? Right? You saw what they did to the Liberty Bell, by the way. No. Those one. animals. Yeah, they spray painted it and everything else. Who, who spray painted? Mr. Goyim, the anti-Israel. Uh, uh, yeah, they went. The Liberty Bell. Mm, How? Yeah, when Netanyahu was doing his speech. Yeah, when Netanyahu was doing yeah, yeah. What would be crazy? Thank, thank. Yeah, thank God that the declaration is under lock and key. These idiots, no respect for anything. Anyway. Useful idiots of Iran. Anyway, so so the. Uh, so let me ask you a question. You, you, do you ask this guy to put on film? Yes. Yeah. Why? What's the basis for that act? What's the basis for that question? What's it? Why are you asking? For the, question the guy never. Asking? The guy never did a mitzvah. Yeah. The guy doesn't know. The guy doesn't know a thing about Torah mitzvahs. All he knows is he's Jewish because sometimes, by the way, you meet somebody say you're Jewish. No, but my grand my, my grandmother. Did I tell you? Remember that story I had with the police officer in Utah? Yeah. Yeah, 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 uh, right, yeah. yeah. Pulled yeah, you over yeah. for speeding. <laughs> so, me you'll, speed? You'll find a Jew anywhere. 
<laughs> is well, it? If you look at your pictures, is it even is it, is it even believable that I would do such a thing? <laughs> that one, I was driving in Utah. <laughs> I actually, wasn't trying to speed. It was just it was empty. It was in January, and the, and those those anti-Semites over there, the police cars are white, blends in with the landscape. Right. Everything's sure. yeah, it really does. Yeah, it <laughs> so the speed limit was sixty five. I think I was doing seventy eight. It wasn't like I was going crazy. I wasn't even trying to speed. I, the van didn't have cruise control. It's one of these big 12 passenger vans. Maybe they're just trying to make money. <laughs> yeah. So the guy pulls me, the cop pulls me over. We're in the middle of nowhere. We're going to Bryce, Bryce Ca Canyon Bryce Park. Canyon mm -hmm. Park. Yeah, it's in the middle of nowhere. It's not like the next to the city. Guy comes over to me, license, eh? And he says, um, I, I, are, you, are, you, are, you, uh, are you Israeli? Said, no. Have you been to Israel? No. So where are you from? It's Brooklyn. There's a lot of Jews there, right? Okay, they, yeah, whatever. So I take my, I take my, uh, he takes my license. My, Cyril says to me, this guy is Jewish 100%. I said, we're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> nowhere, Utah. nowhere. Utah. Nowhere, Utah. Utah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Utah, yeah. Mormon country. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and he comes back, he comes back to me and he says, I, I forgot how he started also again with Israel. You ever been to Israel? I said, can I ask you a question? Any chance, are you Jewish? No, I'm not Jewish. But my grandmother was. Yeah, she went. Her name was Greenberg. She went to the Holocaust. I said, "Your father's mother, your mother's mother." I said, uh, "My mother's mother." So I said, "So I said, I don't want to tell you this, but uh, he said, no, but I'm married. I'm married to this Jewish lady. We have a bunch of kids. More, he was, I think, he was Mormon something. You know, a bunch of kids." I said, uh, "I don't care. You're still Jewish." I said, "I said, I'm asking you a question. Out of all the people you pulled over today." What are the chances pull over a Chabad, a, Chabad, a Chabad rabbi? I think the sign from God to put on tefillin. By the way, it was 20 degrees outside. It was January. <laughs> Would he put on tefillin? He said, do we have to do it on the side of the road? Can we pull over? Yeah, yeah. So he pulled over on the side of the road. And we put on tefillin. Wow. I tried to stay in touch with the guy. He never answered my emails and stuff. But, and, uh, and, 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 yeah, exactly. And he hacked, I'm saying, the guy hacked up his sleeve and it was freezing outside. What does this tell you? This Wait. tells... No. <laughs> but that's the most important thing. Was looking out for it. Yeah. Thank, thank God. But I think, yeah. Having, being Jewish and having a, a biblical name, I once got pulled over. Yeah, once I, once I got pulled over in Cooper City at like 2 o'clock in the morning. I was single. My brother sent me to the show. So I didn't come to a complete stop before making a right on the red. It's 2 o'clock in the morning in Cooper City. Nobody's on the road. There was no one there. This, this is on Sterling? On hiatus, making a ride oh, up to Sterling. Oh, okay. So I didn't, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, this mom's there pulled me over for not coming to a complete stop. I, so I'm thinking, so he, he said, you know, says, uh, so you like the Bible? I said, yeah, you know, Mordecai, he tells me, I told him my name. You know, Esther, I said, yeah, I actually have a sister, Esther. Oh, he's blown away. Oh, Mordecai and Esther, I love that story. Because of that, I'm not giving you a ticket. Thank, <laughs> thank God. Thank God. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Or plenty of other co Cooper City cops have had the privilege of giving me tickets. <laughs> 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 you know the story of Pearl? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, anyway. So I'll share something. You're here, Moses, my brother, right? <laughs> so I'll share something with you really quick. My coworker who moved up to Jacksonville, who's diagnosed with stage three pancreatic cancer, right. His mom is Jewish. He never practiced being a Jew. I'm like, let's put on to fill it. Because I always have mine at work with me. Because I always keep it with me. And he's like, okay. So he put it on and he felt really good. And he's like, thank you. So, play with, but, so why did the person do that? So the answer is, is because most of our, most of our day, we're, we're driven by what makes us feel good. Right? Why are you having this? Because I like it, whatever. And based on that, I, where, where, you ha where you understand, where you perceive life, that's what you do. But there's a certain part of you that's beyond perception, beyond understanding. It's, it, it's beyond logic. So you, when, you, when you occupy your day in, in a logical way, so that illogical part of yourself doesn't necessarily come in, into your conscious self. But when you're presented with, with a situation, right? So for, let's say, for example, a kid's in danger, whatever. So the parent will put himself or herself in danger to rescue their child. Mm -hmm. Of course. You say, hey, 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 hey. Are we crazy? You're going to run into the, ha the burning house? You're yeah. going to hurt yourself. Yeah. No, you, but, but, but if you think about it, it's illogical. You're putting yourself in danger, right? 
So, so similar, so that, so that, that, that parent, there's an, so the element of the parent where, you know, I take my kid to Disneyland, I do all these things because I want a good, a good relationship. That's the logical part. Then there's the illogical part of yourself where you do it, irregardless of logic, right? So after I'm saying this, what we're saying over here is that the person is, is spending his whole his, his whole day, and is and he's occupying himself with the logical approach to life. But when it comes to a situation in life where a Jew is faced with conversion or giving up his life, and everybody wants to live, but what kind of life is it if you're not Jew? If you're not, if you're giving up your identity. So that, that identity as Jew is beyond logic. So a Jew will, will willingly give up his life. I'll tell you a story of the Rebbe. I know, you're thinking, okay, obviously the Rebbe, but... <laughs> but give me a story of, someone, of, of a regular person. But let's give you a story of the Rebbe. That when the Nazis came to Paris, the Rebbe and his wife were living in Paris. So they, what did they do the first thing? They documented all the Jews. So the Rebbe's wife was very intelligent. She knew exactly why they were doing it, for what reason. So when they came, they asked, him, they asked the Rebetzin, what's your religion? The Rebetzin said Orthodox. Orthodox can mean anything. The Rebbe came home. He said, I don't want anyone to think for a second. He went down to the police station and told the, the Gestapo, change it to Jewish. It's like, that's a... That's a so anyway. So, um... So, ah, but the continuing inside, ah, when a person comes to, is confronted with a test of faith, and what's faith? Faith, by definition, is lamay lamadas, um, it's higher than, than intellect, knowledge, and, and faith touches into your soul. To the faculty of Chachma. Right? So you can have a conversation, you can tell them the story of the ten plagues don't make sense. The story of this doesn't make sense. All the stories. The person, right, it can tell you, a science, science says this, science. By the way, do you hear? Science found out this, the, the, the world is really older than what I thought. It found out there's, two, there's a couple stars in the Milky Galaxy that Milky Way galaxy is really older than the sun, and it predates. Mm -hmm. Every time they're so sure, they find something new. Yeah. Anyway, that was, uh, was just in the news uh, past, past week or so. Anyway, Azai, then what happens when a person is faced with this test, Azai, then he knew Ura Mishnah, so this, this Jewishness is aroused from its sleep. Upay Elas, Pilosa, now it comes into the consciousness to have an impact, with the, with the force of God that is vested in it, in it. and now, a person's, now, be, now the person becomes like Moshe Dian said, I'm the most Jewish. Like Moshe Kosta, like it said, the Lord awakens as one who wakes him from sleep. And, it, and the Jewishness is, is waking up and he, and he becomes the obnoxiously stubborn Jews. And by the way, you think all the Jews that give up their life throughout the, throughout the years were all these very religious and very holy Jews? No. Well, some of these Jews were just regular, everyday people that wanted to live, you know, just simple, unlearned people. I'll tell you a story, by the way. A side story. I don't know why this story popped into my head. I know why, because we're talking about giving up our life. So the Baal was a great man. And once in the, when his soul ascended, in the, the Baal Tov merited, such as, because he was so holy, the Baal Tov merited that his soul should experience these things in, in the, in the, upper worlds that usually a person only experiences after they pass away but he was I guess when he was asleep or whatever it is so one time when his soul ascended he asked him who's going to sit next to me in the Garden of Eden he said he said this guy I think his name is Shmuel from a certain town so he went to the town and and they asked him who's the big tzaddik the Hashem knew who he was and he was sure he was going to sit next to a very righteous person he said this big tzaddik Shmuel who's this guy so he said, there is no tzaddik in this town named Shmuel. So Baal Shem Tov knew that the people in the town were mistaken because he, he was told in heaven. In heaven, they don't make mistakes. So he said, you're mistaken. There has to be a guy, Shmuel, he was a big tzaddik. So they said, there is nobody. And, but he was, he didn't stop. He was adamant. There has to be a guy here, Shmuel. So there is a guy, Shmuel, but he's anything but a tzaddik. He's a brute and, a, and he's a... <laughs> and he's a vulgar human being. A huh? A bulvan. Yeah, really a bulvan. So they, so some of oh, he's probably a hidden tzaddik. So he comes to the guy's house, and the guy's a bulvan, a big guy. Hashem just said, okay, stay here. He says, oh, I don't like people. I don't like, I don't want guests. So Hashem just pastors him, finally. And Hashem just sees the way he acts. He acts like in a real disgusting manner. He mumbles the bracha and he eats like an animal. And Hashem just thinks to himself, he's probably just putting on a show. He doesn't want to reveal who he really is. 
So at night, Hashem feigns like he's sleeping, and he, like you know, he peeks at, and he sees no, the guy acts that twenty four seven. He's a disgusting person. And he, and, and, and what and that Hashem was a really refined person. So the way the guy ate really really bothered him because he ate like a he ate like an animal. <laughs> so finally, after three days of being there and not and not act and not you know finding out the guy's secret. Hashem just couldn't take it anymore. He says, what, what, do you, what do you act that way? What do you eat that way? Eat like a bench. So he says, let me tell you a story, this guy said. He says, he says my father owned an inn. And, and when the Cossacks came, uh, for, my father, for the Jews, they, grab, they, they busted down the door of the inn, and they take my father and they burn him alive because he, was, because he was Jew. But my father was a very thin, tiny person. So the, he made a very, very small fire. So I decided when they come for me, I'm going to make a big fire. And the Hashem just said, now I, now I got it. Now I understand. That means so every time he ate, all he thought about was, I'm eating the saint of our God's name. Yes, yeah, so on the surface, he, he said, so that, we wish we could eat that way, right? On the surface, it looked like, it looked like he, was eat, he was eating to be like an animal. But the truth of the matter is, with every single bite, he was serving God. So most people don't they don't uh, don't have that, but but uh, but but for when a person is a, is confronted with faith, all of a sudden he has the power the skaber to overpower uh, uh, um over the klipa what's covering over uh, his, his godly soul and 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 he's able to overpower any of the desires of the physical world, the hetter the esther what's what's permitted where it's forbidden behem anything and even the things that he become he became accustomed to. That that uh, that he likes were limits by him, and all of a sudden now, he went from, he went from, you know, loving the chocolates or whatever it was, uh, and all of a sudden he, he, he he's despised by it. For lifchar b'loy by Hashem lechalgal gadoli, and to choose Hashem as his part in his lot, and if it means limsar next page two sixty eight in the old print, and if it means limsar two seventy five in the new print, if it means limsar not nashal glitz shmei, if it means to to give up his life for God's name, he'll do that too. Although his entire life, he was ruled by his desires. He was ruled by the cover of his soul. His soul wasn't able to reveal itself. His soul was in a state of, of exile. Sure, like the, the rabbis say, the people who, who, the, who are wicked, they are dominated by their hearts. Anytime their heart desires something, they do it. But it was the right thing, the wrong thing, they do it. But however, when it comes to a taste, facing God in, in the, um, in the uh, to choose in one God, she says this that his the foundation of the connection between a Jew and God is in the highest levels. Begins chachma shib nefesh alakis in level of chachma in his godly soul. Shabal muvash ar and say baruchu that in the godly soul. Is vested the uh, godliness itself. So then, we go we go back, and we go to something we discussed earlier. That there, that there is no nothing except for godliness. God is the only thing, and godliness is the only thing. Everything else is not truly a thing. It only it only um, presents itself as an entity, as something important. In the absence, so to speak, quote unquote, of godliness. So it says, by the giving of the Torah, it says, by the giving of the Torah, the birds didn't chirp, donkeys didn't bray, water stopped to flow. The world froze. Why? Because in the presence of godliness, there is nothing else happening. Right? So you, know, so you go to somebody, you go to somebody, who was in the midst of, God forbid, a family emergency. And you tell them, well, but what about, what about the stock market? Say, it doesn't exist. Exactly, I think I care about the stock market right now. So everything else, right, let's say a guy is making money, everything else, and he gets a phone call. Oh, this happened, this happened, your kid fell down, you know, steers, whatever it is. Also, he doesn't care about the stock market, doesn't care about anything else. All he cares about, you know, he's, he's by the football game and he's cheering, it's very important, the Giants and the Dolphins win, and all of a sudden, he gets a phone call, you got to come home now. What, what happened? What happened? What, the giants aren't important anymore, because the giants aren't aren't really a thing. You made them a thing, but the only true thing is what's what's really important. If to a Jew, the only th- true thing is God. 
And therefore, whatever what was, 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 was formerly important, and I call it klipas betelim mutalim. All the klipas are nullified and they vanish. And they, and they are as they have never been, like, just like they are in the presence of God. Could you see, like we say, all the nations are like zero next to God, before God. We say this on, on Wednesday. All your enemies, um, the enemies of God, will perish and they will be scattered. Just like, fi- just like wax, just melts away before fire. So too, uh, so too the, the, uh, with anti godliness, melts away. Wax, you don't see the wax going away, it just goes away automatically uh, by, by the fire. So let's, let's finish. I know it's a little late. Let's finish off the chapter. So all these all these verses illustrate how how the klippas vanish when the light of Hashem is found in Chachma, reveal itself. Therefore, despite the fact that the klippas have always had the upper hand over the sinner, he's able to overcome this test of faith. Al Rebbe now goes on to explain how this hidden love also comprises fear. So 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 we we explained what the, that every person has this love. But one more thing, Al Rebbe, it was question number four which was presented in chapter 18, is we know it's important to love God, but it's also equally important to, to have fear of God, right? You don't, you don't do the Averot, the transgressions, out of fear of God. So we understand that you'll do every mitzvah because out of hidden love. But what about fear? So Al-Tarab has said that the fear of God is, is also part of this hidden love. al but now in the last two pages is going to explain how that is. Vihine 269 in the old print. Vihine or... or um, yeah. Um, Ira, where are we in the new print? Uh, 276. 276. The middle 276. Which is a clothed in the divine soul of Chachma. God of Atzum, Kalkach is so intense. To banish and repel the Sitrach, the opposite of holiness. And whatever is covering holiness. It can't touch even the expression of his holiness. Because remember, when a person is faced with conversion, it's not only that he feels Jewish, but I'll go through it anyway. No. Meaning, he'll, he'll say, no, I, I won't even identify and, and as a Gentile. I won't even, not only that, I won't even, I won't even outwardly bow down, even though inside I believe, the Jew will say, no, 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 no. I'm not even giving in a little bit uh, to, to, to have, give you the the satisfaction of me even expressing for a moment that, that I'm Jewish. It, it, that, um, so the, the, the power of your neshama, the God of light in the neshama, is so powerful <coughs> that it, 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 it can, it can um, affect the expression of it, even to thought, speech, and action. That it, it, it'll only be the godly soul, nothing will cover it up. Next page in 270 in the old print. The high this means, He will stand in the test. To give over his life, even if it means just doing something, not even believing. Are you familiar with the story of Hannah and her seven sons? The story of Hanukkah time, where the Greek king came to went to Hannah. Hannah was a, a, a woman from a prestigious family. I guess her husband was already there, and he went to the oldest son. He said, "You know, bow down." He said, "No." So they killed him in front of the, in front of Hannah and the, and the six. And, and went, and it went then six, five, four, and then it went to the second to last son, the last son. He said, listen, I'll tell you what. I'm just going to drop my ring, and you bend down to pick it up. And the kid said, all right, you can take your ring, right? And, and they killed Khan, and she jumped. She's buried in Swat. Her and the seven sons are buried in Swat, by the way. So a Jew won't even outwardly do something that will make make the person believe that, he's, that, that he believes, even though inside he won't do it. He becomes action and obnoxious and say, I'm 100% Jewish and I'm not going to do anything um, a, a, against Judaism. Going, for example, <speaking in Hebrew> to bow down even though he, he, um, he, he doesn't believe. <speaking in Hebrew> also, he won't speak falsely, God forbid. He won't even say, I believe. Um, <speaking in Hebrew> Uh, against the unity of God, even though his heart and his mouth are not agree with each other. In his heart, he believes in, in God, but I'll say, I'll say something just to get out of it. Um, only, um, only his heart is perfect in faith and belief in God. 
And this is called the chilu. This is called fear. This is called because he loves God so much, he won't do anything to separate from him. So this is the natural love that, that's embedded in every Jew, in the, in the divine soul in every Jew. That the, 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 the nature of this divine soul desires, retain and wants naturally to connect to its origin and source, which is God, which is the light of the Ein-Saif. Because of this, the virtue of this love, and, and because I love you so much, Therefore, so, so, so let's say, let's give um, a, a vulgar example, for example. It's not really vulgar because the Torah, the Torah compares idolatry to, to adultery. You go over to that guy and say, would you commit adultery? He says, no, why not? I'm afraid I'm going to get caught. <laughs> <laughs> that's a reason. <laughs> yeah, that's not a reason. Yeah, that's a reason. He's going to get caught. He'll be caught by a right. sin. <laughs> no, I'm saying, but aside from that, and let's say the guy goes through life and he never commits adultery, but there's something wrong with the relationship. What we're saying over here is that a guy doesn't commit adultery. Why? Because I don't want to damage my relationship. Because I love my wife so much. I don't want to do anything to damage a relationship. So the fear of doing something wrong is intertwined with love. It's the same thing with a Jew. A Jew, because he loves God so much, doesn't want to damage his relationship. So I'm not going to do anything he doesn't like. So many times we think of fear as, oh, I'm afraid God's going to hurt me and punish me and strike me down and take away, you know, you know garnish my wages from my bank account, you know, whatever it is. Whatever it is, you know. But yeah, that's, that's like not committing adultery because I'm afraid I'm going to get caught. Very basic, and that's not really what it is. What it really is is a Jew is is is, is takes delight in his relationship. So why would I do anything to damage the relationship? It's because I love. I I, I don't do bad. That's what you're saying. So so this this fear of the chedus it doesn't want to contaminate. She Hashem Echad, which is contrary to God's unity. And at last page in two seventy one in old print. Two seventy eight. Two seventy eight in the. The new print, afilu, even if it means, even if it means uh, to do something in an outwardly way. <coughs> which, is only, which is only speech or only action. Without even believing in it. Because why would I do something that, that damages my relationship? Here I have a, I have a healthy relationship. I, I, I don't want to do it. It's all to lay down to, just to, to conclude some very fundamental concepts. That it, no matter what a Jew does his entire life, he can't contaminate that holiness of a Jew. And throughout life, we come to situations where we're faced with a choice. And, and God forbid we should ever be faced with a choice, um, a person should be faced with a choice of, you know, God or life. But the other says, because a Jew can't sever himself from God, he won't. And the, the trick is trying to get that love of God to impact us every day, which we're going to continue later. And because I and because I love God so much, I won't do anything to separate him, to be separate from him. Questions? Almost the Right. Next week is Tisha B'av. so we're going to have to learn a different a different night, either Wednesday or Thursday night, because we can't learn Monday. You're not allowed to learn Monday night, so it's either going to be Wednesday or Thursday night, depending on schedule. All right, everybody. Yeah, it's off. It's yeah. Off. I think it's off. Is that off? Should be. It's kind of tough. No, it's off.